Hey there friends, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about uh, trends and trend lines and um, algorithmically finding trend lines. So uh, maybe this, these two lines right here, maybe they, they s somehow, uh, you can even draw them as a single line, um, depending on how you draw your trend, right? There are a lot of different opinions on, on whether trend lines are useful uh, trading uh, tools. Some people find them useful, some people don't. For those who do um, and uh, are interested in programming, they might want to learn how to uh, identify them uh, automatically. So this is what we're going to be covering today. A market is said to be trending if, in a certain period of time, the general direction of the price is either up or, or down. So if the general direction is up, then the market is in an uptrend, and if it's uh, down, then the market is in a downtrend. And you can identify this by, uh, in an uptrend, seeing that prices hit higher highs and higher lows, and in a downtrend, the prices hit lower highs and lower lows. In order to identify trends and do draw trend lines, you want to find the local minimas and maximas over a, a period of time, right? So you want to find those peaks and those valleys. And if you find those peaks and those valleys, then you can see whether um, you can form trend lines or not. So depending on the kind of area you're looking for, you can have more dense peaks and valleys or, or rarer, right? So uh, depending on the time frame that you're looking for, depending on the period that you want to analyze, uh, you can set that the number of, of uh, candles in the vicinity of which you want to find uh, the local minima or a maxima. In order to uh, programmatically solve a problem, we want to break it down to its base components, right? So uh, in our case, um, finding trend lines, the base components would be as follows. Number one, we want to find the local minimas and maximas. And, uh, and a part of that is determining the period that we're going to look at. Now I'm going to show you what that means. Uh, once we've identified these minimas and maximas, we want to draw lines between all of them. So all the maximas, we're going to combine uh, them together. And all the minimas, we're going to combine them together and, and draw lines between them. The third step. Uh, after we have all these lines is to eliminate the, uh, the clear non-trend lines. So I'll show you what that means. Um, and the fourth step will, will be to combine the similar trend lines. So since we've combined all of the lines together, uh, a lot of them will be uh, close to parallel. A lot of them will touch um, uh, the same points. We'll, we'll start from the same points. So. Um, if we have a few lines that um, the angle between them is not that large and this is going to be a parameter that we're going to be able to change, then we can uh, potentially combine uh, those lines together into one that, that is, is stronger. And uh, the fifth step is going to be to rate each trend line by its strength and that means uh, how many times did the price touch it. <clears throat> Going on in your life right now that's 
challenging. All right, so the first function is gonna be a helper function. It's gonna uh, give us the, the number of digits before the first non-zero digit. Okay, so in five find trends, uh, this is gonna be the main function. Uh, so the first thing here is to select the local minimas and maximas, and we're gonna use arg le uh, uh, arg rel extrema, a function from Scipy, uh, which uh, finds um, finds the the minimas and the maximas and puts them in a, in a series um, after this we're going to uh, filter a little bit this to series so we want to remove all the minimas that are close to each other and all the maximas that are close to each other so that we sort of uh, lessen the amount of noise that we will we'll have next um, we're going to uh, compute all the trends made by the local maximas so basically this is the point where we just draw lines between all of the local maximas and we're going to do the same for the minimas and we do this by iterating through all the maximas uh, twice in a double for loop uh, and by drawing lines I mean uh, creating an equation of the line between the two of them because these points are on an xy axis x being uh, time and y being price so we can create an equation of the line between any two points N uh, next we're gonna go um, through the points in between those two p1 and p2 right so now we're, go we're gonna go through the points in between and we're going to check given the the point and given the equation of the line of p1 and p2 we're gonna check whether that point is above or below the line now if we're looking uh, for a trend line connecting the minimas if a point in between the p1 in between p1 and p2 is below that minima uh, is below that line that means that uh, that trend line is invalid and and next we're gonna do the same for the uh, a downtrend so again we're iterating uh, through all the points connecting lines between them and then once we've connected uh, a line between two points we go through all the points between those two points and see whether they're above or below the trend line uh, to see whether that's a valid trend line or not when we uh, are trying to validate or invalidate a trend line um, we also try to find the distance between the points in between the first and the last point of the trend line and the the actual trend line because if that distance is is smaller than our distance factor then that means that that point is essentially on the trend line um a further uh, validating our trend line
Now here is where we're gonna uh, remove a redundant trends. Um, so we're gonna check all the trends that start at the same point or end on the same point. We're gonna go through all of them and then uh, we're gonna compute the angle once we find two point two trends that start or end at the same point we're gonna compute the angle between them and if the angle is less than uh, a certain degree uh, then we combine those two trends into one into the longest into the longer one we're getting towards the end of the function so we're gonna go through all the trend lines and see if uh, if they have more than two validations then that trend line we're gonna draw it um, to cover all the all the all the plot so not just from the starting point to the finish point but to cover all of it <clears throat> and uh, this is something that we can we can change um, depending on our uh, preference and finally we're going to uh, to test how this thing works we're gonna show them we're gonna uh, we're gonna request the LTC USDT data from Binance um, on the five minute interval the last 1000 candles and then we're going to find the trends available on that let's see how it goes If you identify certain trend lines, maybe you can see that the price is um, sort of moving between within a channel, like moving up and down within two two trend lines. And what that what you can do with that is, um, whenever you know the price hits the lower side, then you 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 long, and until the price hits the upper side. Um, but again, you have to be certain that, that the trend, the trends are sort of gonna keep going um, the way they are. And th there are different ways you can do that. I'm not gonna go into them right now. I don't uh, have them prepared for that. But basically, if you can see, for example, here, right? Let's say that there's a trend channel going on here, right? So as you can see, actually, um, so the price hit this uh, limit and then it went back up, right? So that's why this trend was formed. So uh, maybe this, these two lines right here, maybe they, they s somehow, uh, you can even draw them as a single line, um, depending on how you draw your trend, right? Like maybe you start from here and you just draw a line all the way up to here, right? So if that was the case, you can see that until this point, we actually had a trend going on. Um, and, and, and right here, the price hit that trend and then it kind of bounced back, right? So um, now you know you, you have to watch out is it gonna bounce back up or is it gonna go below like that's 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 another story right you you can do some i don't know candlestick analysis here or 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 something else um to figure out if you know um this is gonna keep falling or not but uh the point is this gives you uh, at least one extra point of information when you want to um, execute your trades.